now that hard drive stuff has kind of U-turned by Synology, are they okay to buy now? Welcome back to the Raid Room. For those that aren't aware, these are the videos where it's just you and me. There's no cuts, no script, no B-roll. There's nothing. There's just us talking about relevant subjects in the world of network attached storage. And I think a lot of you who are just doing your tippy toes into the world of NAS or someone that was thinking about buying a Synology, then saw all of the shakedown, what was going on with hard drive locking, are wondering now, is it okay to buy this brand? And that's what we're gonna go through. We're gonna go through the event. We're gonna go through what the brand has done in terms of uh, reparations and how they handled certain things, their response, and ultimately where the brand is at now in the future and whether you can trust them. But if you are coming to this video and you're looking for the TLDR and the short answer, I'm gonna give it to you right now. The brand is no more or less suitable to be purchased now than it was six to seven months ago before they rolled this out. Because realistically, and you can browse your Reddits or your forums or platforms of choice, most of the way they conducted themselves during this whole hard drive stuff wasn't a big surprise. They have not been particularly averse at locking features out, locking certain features and facilities out. And indeed, although they didn't flat out lock hard drive utilization, the number of warnings, the number of alerts, the number of red letter, orange letter, and effective threats to the end user that their system was in an unsafe fashion led a lot of us to kind of see the writing on the wall towards this hard drive stuff for a while. Suitably, if you are someone that is thinking about this brand right now and think, oh, the dust has settled on this hard drive stuff, they're okay to buy now, I'm gonna say to you right now, I can't see, I can't say that I don't think Synology isn't gonna try this again. Realistically, they've already got this fix in place with regards to M.2. That isn't just storage pools either, that includes caching. Likewise, this has only been effective of desktop plus series models. That doesn't, you know, doesn't apply to RackStation. Next year, we're almost certainly gonna see a new range of RackStation solutions, all of which are going to feature this hard drive locking. Um, it doesn't affect the XS series or any of the larger scale devices there. This has been, effectively, if you look across the whole portfolio, a very small concession by the brand. And again, I'm glad they did it. It's something we talked about for a long time. And I'm glad they reversed this. They didn't just allow some drives, they completely removed the restriction. It was actually quite a large leap and we got to give them credit for that by you turning such a large stance from a corporate point of view where most corporations will only do small half-hearted gestures until they think they can get away with just enough. This was quite a large jump from them, at least within the plus ecosystem. But I can't say that I don't think the brand isn't going to do this again in some form. And I have to at least caveat that if you buy one of the 2025 Plus Series devices now, you're not going to be affected by those changes probably. But at the same time, we have to analyse how this was rolled out. I covered this in another video, and I'm sorry to be repetitious, but of all the ways they could have allowed for third-party drives to once again be utilised on their platform freely and wholly, I will say... Rolling this out as a DSM 7.3 update date was weird because Synology have always run betas of their software before they've gone whole time. These are the larger scale updates, not the small incremental bug fix stuff, but when they do large version upgrades, generally there's a beta for a while and there was no beta here for this. This was a large software update that included this change when they could have just changed the hard drive database update because in their systems, you can just update the drive database completely separate to everything else on the system. So them rolling this out in the way that they did seemed excessive to say the least, particularly for those that wouldn't want to upgrade that OS to a new banger version than the 2025 version. Now, the other thing we have to highlight is they have seemingly made a lot of noise about this U-turn on hard drives, but briefly. So they went from the initial uh, poor messaging uh, from the Synology.de or Synology Germany uh, press release and then a few around the world within the space of about three weeks back in April, May. And they covered it a little bit, but didn't really address the subject, highlighting that one, they were going to be working with the likes of WD and Seagate to get their drives added to their new stricter compatibility listing. We'll come back to that in a moment. And alongside that, saying why their drives, their range of hard drives was a better pick there. And then there was effective radio silence on the subject. There was no mentioning of um, proof of how their drives were better with more direct analytical responses there, but more appropriately, 
We never saw WD or Seagate get added to their list. Now fast forward to now, the U-turn on this decision on hard drive uh, lockout and to a more of a position where you can use any drive you want in these systems, as long as they're hard drives. I will say that we're seeing a similar approach, a similar box ticky, that's it, and we're done with this subject um, way of doing it. We've seen very, very few press releases. We've seen them talk a lot more about, we listen to your feedback, and now we're integrating this when it is something where they have been, you know, approached and discussed on by end users on the subject of third party hard drive utilization for quite literally years. Uh, it's only now when presumably it's hit the sales on the bottom line that they have suddenly taken such a drastic move. But more importantly, we are still, we are still um, unable on their compatibility lists to see Seagate or WD drives. So are they? or have they been working with Seagate and WD all this time? Or was that all just BS? Was that all words and not actual actions in the background when they were hoping that WD and Seagate would take the time to work on those drives? But the second thing, and again, hopefully when this video goes live, I could be proven wrong on this because I'm recording this now, I think on the 20th of October, 2025, <coughs> is that if you go to the compatibility pages for some of the 2025 products right now, not only do they not list Seagate or WD drives, there is no mention of the ability to use non-Synology drives. There's a compatibility list there. There's no mention of a non-compatibility list, which would be them saying these drives don't work. But more precisely, there is absolutely no reference that I can see there to these devices supporting Seagate and WD which again leans into that whole box sticky lip service attitude to the way this has been approached. There's press releases, but on the actual product pages, there is still no mention that I, a newbie user, because remember, I'm deep in the weeds, I'm deep in the lore on this, but most users that are buying these for the first time have no idea that they can use Seagate or WD drives. And there's conflicting information online now where there's not only six to seven months of very pissed off posts and pissed off reviews that state they can't use third party drives, but then prior to that, there's gonna be information that says they can, but with warnings. The compatibility page, the refuge of the new buyer, the refuge of the noob, is going to go there and clearly Synology have once again decided that their drives are the priority there with no mention to the use of third party drives. And I think it, it's just not on if they're going to go down the road of reversing this decision to not go at it proper. It's one thing to say to users they can use third party drives, but to do this as a press release and not in a louder, louder way on your own compatibility pages is for me a ball being dropped. And also let's talk about, I mentioned earlier on, the inability to use M.2 SSDs, you know, other than their own for things like caching and pools. Every robust Why not you turn on the SSD card two SSDs? Right. 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 I don't think this is going to be the last time this brand is going to address the subject of drive compatibility on their systems. I think maybe they'll draw the line on hard drives and hope for the best that this will be enough to turn the tide on in terms of sales of their systems. But right now we're watching this brand not include uh, graphics drivers on their systems. We're watching this brand not include support of M.2 NVMEs. Um, from third parties rather than their own and we're witnessing this brand even though rolling out this decision seemingly not add Synology, uh, Seagate or WD drives to the compatibility list and not allude to the support of third party drives on their compatibility pages. What we're witnessing here once again is box ticking. We're witnessing the brand realising they've got to do a bit of a U-turn but they're doing it in still a very restrained fashion despite the arguably beneficial aspects of using third party drives on these systems and of course that Synology DSM for all of the complaints, for all of the critique, we have to at least acknowledge that their platform is still absolutely phenomenal in terms of the software and for those that have used it there is a reason people stay within this ecosystem but again as a new user if your question is Based on all of this, are they a bad brand? Is it okay to buy them? Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed at all. Still great software, still weak hardware. 
It's still solid as all hell. It's still a brand that I would argue is a little bit quick on the kill switch when it comes to some of their features and services there. And many of us now are just gonna wait and see what happens with DSM-8, because realistically, we know that's what the brand is doing now. The brand is now gearing and starting to transition a lot of things over towards their plans internally for DSM-8. And with that, are we gonna see more AI integration? Are we gonna see pre-bundled devices? Is this the last of the Plus series? We'll have to wait and see, but at least right now, for you, if you want a robust, solid platform, if you want reliability, I do think Synology is still a great name in the biz. But if you are considering not buying this brand because of the stuff that happened with hard drives and now you wonder if it's the sort of thing they'll do again, they will. They will definitely do it again. So it's really down to you in the future whether that is something that you're concerned about. But just keep in mind that it's only going to be effective of those new units and that new software. But this has been Synology, is it all right now? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm really sorry about the repetition in this video, but it's just, I tried to find as many ways as possible to describe the same shitty situation for a lot of users, which again, in the comments, seems to roll around. It's just easier to just spam it all out. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for sticking with me as long as you have, and I will see you next time.